Hello music people, welcome back to Make the Music and today I got another video showing you some more uh, this one's more of a mixing trick than it is a production thing but also sort of feeds into uh, the idea of getting the sound right in the beginning uh, and early in the mix as well and so really what I'm going to show you is some great tricks to get your master bus processing or sometimes it's called mix bus whatever, it's all the plugins on that master track and really what I'm trying to show you is the secrets that I was not told early on into recording and mixing that really go a long ways at getting things to the finished product quickly. And one of those things is master bus processing. And so what I'm showing you here is my plugin chain for the master bus to get my mix ready to be sent to mastering where some additional processing and uh, normalization will occur. So this is my FX chain. Now here's a quick warning, okay? You can easily, easily screw up your mix if you overdo it with this mix bus processing. So just be careful. I would say just, you know, you want to add 10%. And really what we're trying to do with this mix is I feel like when I have the mix and there's all the transients and all the things going on, what I'm doing to the master bus is it's just sort of containing that. It's almost like putting a dome around the mix, making it thicker inside that dome, keeping everything reined in as a really nice constrained uh, machine coming at you and a, a song that doesn't feel like it's popping up out of nowhere with weird transients and weird volume spikes, but really is streamlined with dynamics as well. So here's what I'm gonna do. This is a song I'm working on here, uh, and a mix I'm working on. I'm gonna play you one of the choruses here just to give you an idea of what the song sounds like. Okay, so that's sort of my final mix I've got going on here with all the master bus processing. Now I'm going to turn this off, okay? And I want to let you know I have a volume adjustment here. So I have adjusted the volume for all the plugins that went on the master fader. Also, so I can normalize the volume for eventual mastering. So it is volume matched. Let's have you hear the song without all those plugins. Okay, so that was with, with it without all the master bus processing. Now, I'm going to see if I can, uh, no, not the master track. Let's see here. Here we go. So this is the master fader here, the mixer here. So was that mix bad? No, there's nothing technically wrong with that mix. Is the mix finished? In my opinion, no. And there's a couple things that, in, in my opinion, you need on that master fader in most situations to get your mix to what I call the finished level. And so the first thing that I'm doing here, I'm going to go right through the chain, is I'm going to, okay, I'll, uh, and this is a, this is the virtual mix rack plugin from Slate. And like I said, I'm really trying to be, you know, pretty conservative with what I'm doing on the mix bus here, but also going for a sound. There was a sound I was going for, and I moved knobs till I got there. You got to use your ears as well. I'm using just two plugins here. This is the Revival, adding, adding just a bit of shimmer and thickness. It's just a little bit of saturation. Nothing too crazy with this one, honestly. And then I am doing some EQ boosts here. These look pretty dramatic, but they're not. They're just two, uh, another two dB boost here, a little bit of a cut in the 400 region. Um, and then everything else is basically flat. And so I'm just adding a bit of top end. This is a really good plugin to add some top end to your mix too, to get it kind of kind of open up and sound a lot better. So let me play this chorus here. In my opinion, the mix just sounds so much more clear when I added that, and it wasn't too drastic. Like, if I did something crazy. I mean, you could see the mix started to sound pretty harsh and pretty thin at that point. So it's all about being conservative uh, with these changes and not messing with it too much and just getting it to a better place. What I have here, this is the Reaper stock saturation, right? Nothing crazy here. You can get this plugin you know, for free. 58% um, saturation. I've been using this plugin forever because I've been using Reaper and it just just juices the mix a little bit uh, and it doesn't add anything too crazy here. It's just a little bit of excitement, right? So what I'm doing in the beginning stages here is I'm doing a little bit of surgical EQ or boosting to get the mix tonally to a place where I like it. This is what the stock EQ plugin is doing. This is a Reaper stock EQ plugin. I thought there was way too much 
uh, low mid buildup. And no, I'm not just scooping the mix. I actually did find that there, when I referenced it on other speakers, there was just too much of this going on. It was muffling the mix a bit. And so it's a two, you know, negative 2.8 dB cut there, a little bit of a sweep, a little boost in the, you know, the upper mids there, and then some, some, a little bit of a shelf in the subs. Nothing too crazy. Um, let me bypass that FX here. To me, that added more punch in the lows and then also added some clarity. So I really like that one. This is the Sheps Omni Channel. This is a great plugin, and I use this a lot on a mix bus here for uh, my mix bus compression. To me, this is the most important part of my mix bus chain. Everything else, I can kind of deal with in the mix, honestly. Like, if I need more clarity, uh, I could EQ things differently. It's just easier for me to get it done on, on the mix bus without having to EQ so many tracks. It's really a top down mixing approach to get to a result very quickly. And um, oftentimes, uh, I start with this chain while I'm even tracking just to give me an idea of what it's going to sound like as the finished result. But if I play this here, all that's going on with this plugin here is I have a little bit of saturation. It's just, it's very little. It's very subtle, 7% out of 100. The most important part of this chain is this compressor here. I have it on the FET setting, the ratio, uh, two, two, four to one or 2.4 to 1. A really slow attack, that's the key. So if you're using any mix bus compression, slow, slow attack so you don't clamp the transients and a very fast release so that uh, the compressor releases off the transients uh, very quickly. So it's just, what it's doing here is it's just catching the spikes of the mix and actually it's squashing it a little bit together. Nothing too crazy, we're not limiting, we're not mastering here, but uh, it's just squashing the mix a little bit and giving it a little more density as a whole here. This is sort of to taste. Some For some styles of music, you may want very little mix bus compression, maybe one dB. For something this is more like very pop rock leaning um you know it's going to be more limited than your than your average mix and so you saw here the meter was at negative one to negative three occasionally going up into that negative six range that's that's actually not great i may change that but it sounded good to me so i just left it and it was okay when it got to mastering so watch this meter here And so you can see it just occasionally touches the negative six, mostly hangs out in this region. You can do this with any compressor. I'll probably do a video showing you how to do it with the stock Reaper compressor. Any compressor will work, but you just want to squash that mix one, two, three, four, in some cases, maybe a little more. But if you start to go over negative five, you're really starting to ruin stuff in your mix and uh, causing some problems, especially for the mastering engineer. When in doubt, leave it a little more dynamic. You can always squash it more in the mastering phase. Um, but this is just really, it really helps when those kick and snares hit to sort of blend the mix together and really make it dense. That's, that's the only way that I can use to describe it there. Then I have a stock stereo enhancer. Um, I don't really have any, even have this doing much, but all it's doing is adding a little bit of stereo width. Another thing, less is more when it comes to anything with stereo enhancement. You go too far, things are starting to get phasy and weird real quick. So just subtle, subtle stereo movement. That's all it's doing. And then this is just a volume adjustment for all the plugins I added in all the makeup game. So I'm gonna bypass this chain, turn it on and off, and you can hear what it's doing. So here's with the chain on. Okay, so in my opinion, with that chain on, everything was a little more compressed together, much more clarity. I felt like I could hear the vocal very easily. Everyone seemed, everything seemed nice. And I take it off, everything just seems muffled, covered in a blanket, um, just really not bringing the clarity and punch that I wanted. So that's a sample mastering chain. Um, you know, you can rip this one that I'm using or take it and use it as a variation or some, take some of the principles. I think the two, maybe three things that I would definitely recommend on that chain would be some form of an EQ, some form of a compressor and maybe some form of very, very, very subtle stereo enhancement. And that's really all you need. The rest of it is just sort of, you know, this was very small moves with some saturation here or there. And it's just from a long time of experience of doing this. Um, I know what plugins compound well with each other. Yeah, so that that's my chain. Let me know down in the description, what is your mix bus chain, if you have one at all, and share your opinion on mine and what you think, uh, you know, how it was affecting the sound. 
Uh, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe to see more instructional videos like this. And I'll see you guys next time. Go back to making music, all right?